Hello and welcome to our second episode of playing Hearts of Iron 3 as a German Puppet Master. Last time we didn't actually do all that much, it was just really setting up the game. Um, so we built up our army, built up our air force, got my awesome little SS core army thing going. And I'll just set the wheels in motion that will let me dominate the world soon enough. But things are starting to look up. It is the middle of 1937, and those of you who know your history will realise that, well, 1938 and 1939 were very big years for Nazi Germany. So let's see how we go. So now I've got this SS. What should I do with them? Well, Austria and Czechoslovakia are going to collapse because they, well, cave into me because they always do. Which then leaves. Poland is the next obvious choice. I mean, I don't actually have to fight Poland. No, actually... If I just annex Austria, annex Czechoslovakia... At that point, if I, instead of doing the historical thing, attacking Poland... Japan's conquered Shanxi, very nice for them. So I might as well actually just attack France and then fight France and UK and... You know, the allies, probably just those two, possibly Holland. And just ignore Poland. Uh, the risk there is that Poland will then attack me in the back while I'm busy dealing with France. But... If I do, if they don't declare war, I can just take Poland later on, no problems. But Poland collapses easy anyway. No, I think we're going to go for Poland. And... It's kind of conventional, but we can live with that. And since I've got two SS core... Let's attack from two directions. One from out here, attacking behind Warsaw. The other one straight there, driving straight into Warsaw. So we'll send the SS army to... Here, which is fairly central. The first core, under Blaskowitz can come to Neustetten and Dolmen can go down to Kreuzberg and they're there two years before when they have to actually attack and efficient research, lots of them um, light tank armor, mass assault, infantry, anti-tank weapons so all this but central planning is too far advanced and also, industrial efficiency, all of these four here. So central planning is now the bottom technology. And only 20 left between there and where we actually start researching things. Economic boost is good. Naval strike tactics is also good, even though we don't have any naval bombers yet. How far off are they? A fair way off. A lot of Panzer Divisions to go through. But they're fairly cheap Panzer Divisions now, because I've built those SS Divisions, which helped to, um... Well, they increased my armor practical, so they build them quicker and at less cost. Oh, and Japan's just bet nationals China. And I can annex Austria. And because I am playing to be the puppet master kind of thing, I will release Austria as a puppet. My first one. And I've got another SS division. Um, okay, that gives me seven. But I'll have to build the brigades and everything for it, so armor. Just need one. Um, tank destroyer, one. And engineer, one of them. Okay, and then these other two can just join into... Well, they can join into any group, doesn't really matter which one. But I'll give them a general. And actually, Oberkommander Europe should have a general as well. Um, give them someone good. Sean is good. You know, let's just go with... Big promotion for him. Austria wants to buy a Stuka, and we'll say OK. 
battleship engine way too technologically advanced. And this one will join one of the SS cores. Second SS core. Okay, lots of technologies. All the medium tank ones are too advanced. And we can do the Treaty of Munich. We gain the Sudetenland. What are we working on producing now? Infantry, very good. We've almost done with them, actually. An infantry are very useful to have. Schwerpunkt advance, education advance, and education is going to be way too advanced. But the Schwerpunkt's not, which is very good. And when do these brigades finish? June, July, and August. So I've got to remember to turn off automatic deployment before then. One thing I like about having puppets is that when I do go to war, because you can tell them where to attack, you end up with very multicoloured armies, just watching my German grey and the Austrian brown, and you'll have the Czechoslovakian blue soon enough, and also, well, the Slovakian purple, ice purple blue thing? I can't remember what colour they have, but we'll get them as well. Oh, another interceptor can join the... something... Let's look at OB Europe. There it is. And it is May, so I will turn it off now. Working on interceptors and panzer divisions. Assault concentration and a few others. Special forces in these last two naval ones. But Operation Level Command is fine. There's the first Engineer Brigade. I call them multi role fighters. The AI will want some of those, because they always do. Four of them. And they also want two tactical bombers, so we might as well get them a few tacticals. And four multi role. And all those technologies I heard are bound to do something. Yeah, Italy so can buy a couple. I'll actually be going to war with Italy at some point, I imagine. Or at least I hope to. But I can fight them later. Okay. So destroyer anti aircraft, destroyer engine, destroyer armors to advance. That's not a good sign. Mobile warfare to advance, supply organizations to advance. Um. Capital ship main armament and battleship armor, but battleship anti air is not. But this. Well, I've actually managed to get through to the end of all the 1938 things, and much quicker than I thought I would, uh, which means I suppose I'm going researching 1939 technologies. Which would be rocket engine, radar. Oh, haven't done agriculture yet. First aid combat medicine. Heavy AA guns would be useful, but I don't actually build any. Uh, sometimes I do, but it's probably actually not that useful, so I will skip it for now. Theory, we can get civil defense, repair rate plus 10 percent, good. Tactical commands, oh no, we can't get spearhead yet, next, lots of technologies. Put tactical command structure and mechanized offensive and delayed doctrine. I thought I'd been through here and done all the 1938 technologies, but apparently not. At least I missed a few. And the naval, we're looking at 1939s, of which there are lots. Oh, actually, we don't want cruisers. Um, but we do want spotting and basing. And yeah, these ones are already all going. Fighter, there are lots. It's actually all of the ones that are currently available. And same for bombers. We'll get air launch torpedoes for the navels, twin engine aircraft. Um, medium bomb, definitely. Light bomb. Well, 
researching multi-role fighters, so I might as well do light bomb as well. And we've done the ships, have we not? Yes, we have. Armor, it's all done. Or rocket artillery. No, it's just more things to research. And jungle warfare equipment. And the engineers. And that's it for 1939. And a few inefficient ones down here, apparently. They would be elastic defense, supply transportation, and probably infantry warfare as well. Yep. Oops. And hopefully whatever I just deleted there was actually to advance. Japan wants some multi-rolls. Again, I'll probably be with war at them at some point, but I can deal with that later on. I'll say that. That was very optimistic of me. Being like, yeah, I'll just casually be on the other side of the world fighting Japan at some point. What else am I going to be doing? Just kind of seems like I'm assuming I'm going to be able to defeat, you know, Russia no problems and can afford to just fight Japan, even though they're not ever going to start a fight with me and it's like I've got nothing better to do. Anyway, another SS division's finished. So I will go. I'll just see if I can build any more actually since I'm here. Nope. So back to automatic deployment. And you might as well join the rest of your core down here. And those last three are all way too advanced now. I mean, we're just racing through technology. Uh, bomber targeting, anti-tank, fighter targeting. I'm not actually sure if those two... Uh, I don't know what these ones, bomber targeting and fighter targeting, I'm not sure what they actually do, but reading this description reads like they cancel each other out, like bomber targeting gives them a 20% higher chance of targeting bombers, while fighter targeting gives them a 20% higher chance of targeting fighters. Um, yeah, but I'm researching both of them, which I have a feeling might be a waste. Same as there's another one down here, Ford Air Control versus Battlefield Interdiction, where they sound like they're with your targeting on the front line or the reserves. But I'm not sure whether they actually do cancel each other out or whether they both just improve the efficiency. And I've never actually been able to find out what those do. Like, you know, I've read the manual, I've read the wiki, I've read all sorts of stuff online. And I've just never been 100%, I've never found something that answered it you know, well enough that I felt confident in knowing what they're about. But apparently my solution is to do both and hope they don't cancel out. Okay. Both the tacticals. Blitzkrieg is... and artillery light tank. So just remember bridging equipment is the bottom one. Artillery carriage, also too advanced. Airbase strike? Why am I doing re airbase strike? Uh, I shouldn't be doing that. Well, I never do runway cratering, but apparently my bombers are going to be very good at doing it. Interdiction tactics as well. Oh, and this will be the first Vienna Award. Czechoslovakia are next. And then we'll just release them. So we now have Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Slovakia as our puppets. And this is not called the 1st S Engineer Brigade, it is the 7th SS Division. And we'll get the Oberkommando Europe. Actually, yeah, we will get them to guard the capital of our places. Puppets. But we'll order them to focus now. Mm, let's. The Netherlands will often attack me. Actually, now we'll just go France and Poland. All we have to worry about. Tactical Air Command and Agriculture. Too advanced. And that was Battleship AA. And I will get my allies 
slash puppets. When time comes to attack Poland, they're going to attack into the south of there, whereas my forces will take everything else. And we're tuning through those Panzer divisions. Still wants a couple more infantry divisions. So let's build them. Well, I'll tell them to build. They won't get built before we go to war, but three more divisions. Plus the division of the Marines isn't too far off. Well, Marine divisions take a long time to build, so they are actually a fair way off. Claim on Memo. I might as well take it. Actually, you know what? But now I'm just waiting for the event to declare war on Poland. But I'm not actually going to declare war on them by event, because that makes it harder to puppet them. So I must actually just start the war now. I'll just put the speed down one while it's paused. Declare war. Puppet. And then I'll get my SS Panzer Corps. And... what was the route I was going to take? Straight through there, you can just head straight to Praga. And the other one here. Which actually has a longer route to go. And between the two of them, hopefully they'll be able to encircle a fair bit of our enemies. And Oberkommander Europe will hopefully be able to guard their flanks. Set them to blitzing, naval prepare is good. Air offensive is good. Oh, and we do... No, let's not do Blitzkrieg now. Is it war with France? Is it war with Poland? Is it peace with Soviet Union? So I've got to use it before going to war with the Soviet Union. Um... Actually, I plan on puppeting Poland, so I have to use it before I do that. I oh, know one of the following must be true, so it's either at war with France or at war with Poland. So I can wait till I invade France for that, because it gives me some pretty significant boosts, and I'd like to use that against an enemy that's actually going to be somewhat difficult. And here we want service by requirements, yes. Total economic mobilization, something Germany didn't do, but I'm doing it as soon as I can. And heavy industry, yes. Should actually check my guys are the best, but I'm sure they'll be fine. Seventh SS. Did I not attach you to the second SS core? Apparently not. But there you go. Part of the SS army. Can like Japan and lead to my faction, but I'm not going to. And there are all the Austrian forces marching towards Lo let's just call it Lov. Lvov. Slovakians don't really have many troops. Czechs are sending a division it looks like. But those are two very new countries, so you won't expect them to have much ability to actually help me out here. But my SES guys are breaking through the front lines. We are going to encircle a lot of them, it looks like. But so far, Oberkommander Europe's not doing a great job keeping up. And we've got a pretty solid defense against France here. Actually, it's pretty thin, but hopefully they can manage. I should actually check my convoys. Because all these ones here probably don't actually want them because they're just going to lead to my um, people getting sunk. An easiest way to get rid of them is just to embargo the country I'm trading with. Because that way I don't have to turn off automate trade or do anything like that. Embargo, embargo. And I just hate having to deal with all the trade requests popping up all the time. They probably won't actually pop up all that much now that I'm at war, but still. I've got a few more heading down this way. One to Persia. Oh, I'm running out of diplomacy points. So I am in Australia, I still have to embargo. 
Well, Australia will actually be at war with soon, so they'll effectively embargo themselves. Oh, and we've reached Warsaw. So we'll send some of these guys around. And one of you can stay there. And then we'll have encircled Warsaw. Warsaw's only been going for a few days, it feels like. Actually, it probably has only been going for a few days. My infantry haven't advanced very far at all into Poland. And my allies have actually only just reached the front lines. Just kind of crossing over it now. One diplomacy point means I can embargo Siam. And all those sounds are my ships sinking, because my navy is on prepare, so they won't be going out to sea to sink enemy convoys just yet. Though I must actually have a pretty formidable submarine fleet around. Five there, six in another. And Eleven submarine flotillas are still a fair bit. No fighting in France, as of yet, which is very good. Oh, and I've lost one of my SS Corps. It's not surprising, because when they managed to break my, um, insert, well, my line of supply there, but I've managed to come up from the south. So that was these three. First, second, and third. Fourth Corps, which was the first SS Corps. And you can join onto the SS Army. The thing here is, I actually don't want to destroy the Polish Army because fairly soon they are going to be my allies and I'm going to want them to have all the troops they can. Um, but it looks like I'm going to have to. Well, I don't have to, but I'm about to take Warsaw, and those guys are going to get encircled and destroyed, but I'll probably need to capture one of those two as well. I'm not really close to either of them. Well, let's just send this guy into Warsaw so we can get this battle over and done with. Hungary wants military access. Declined. I'll declare war on them later. And then I can have all the access through their country that I want. Well, I should actually give these guys a bit of um, support. But we're going to win this battle fairly easily. And there'll be Warsaw fallen in a second. And that'll probably be Poland's... well, it is Poland surrendering. So, very soon, three hours, two hours, Poland is now my puppet. And we can shift the SS over to France somewhere. Uh, let's start in Benshein, strategically redeploy to there. And now Poland's not actually at war with France yet, but in my little play around as Japan, it just before I start this video, I learned that my puppets will... they're not at war yet, but the next time I declare war on somebody, they will go to war with everybody I'm fighting a war against. So that if I were to say, start fighting Belgium now, then Poland will declare war on Belgium, and France, and Britain, and all the rest of them. But oddly enough, if Belgium declares war on me, I don't think that's the case. I think I'll have to do the call to arms to Poland, which I actually can't do at the moment because they've put a truce with everyone I'm fighting. Look at all my forces redeploying here, and I should send my orders to my allies. Um, I think I'll just give them a generic order. Actually, no, here's what I'll do. I'll get my allies to attack straight in towards Paris, and actually further on out into here. 
I'm telling Poland to do it as well, but Poland won't actually do it because Poland's not at war. Um, and then what I'm going to do is try and break through here somewhere, somewhere central, and then go around with my SS Corps around either to the north or to the south, trying to encircle a huge part of the Maginot Line. And then hopefully my allies will pour through and head straight to Paris along with, you know, my Oberkommando Europe. And I'm losing a lot of ships sinking. Whoa, look at all these trade we've started doing. Mexico I have to embargo. And Peru. Whoops. Embargo Peru. And this is one to Australia so I can embargo them. And that's all of our foreign trade. Because I don't want to have my transport ships having to sink all the time. Well, it's not that they have to sink. They could live, but Britain, the Royal Navy, is right there. And there's basically only two ways out of here. And both of them are through the United... or past the United Kingdom. So this episode's been a bit more exciting than last. I did say back at the start that 1938 and 39 were big years for the Nazis. So we've puppeted Austria, our first puppet, and then also Slovakia and the Czech Republic, or sorry, Slovakia and Czechoslovakia, because that's how this game does it. And then we started the Second World War, and I started it a lot earlier than it did historically. But so far it's gone very well for us. Um, you might not have realised it, but Poland collapsed incredibly quickly there. In terms of game time, it was actually about 10 minutes ago that we declared war on Poland, and about 3 minutes ago that they surrendered. So, they survived 7 minutes. But next episode, we've got the fight against France and the United Kingdom to look forward to, which should be a good one. I'll see you all then.